In previous videos, I've shown how this laser performs attached to my 3D printer. So much smoke! Looks like the 2.5 watt laser can cut plywood fairly easily after all. But the laser is only as useful as the software we can use to create the toolpath which is compatible with our 3D printer's firmware. In my case, Marlin. One of the easiest ways to create G-code files for our laser is with Inkscape, an open source vector graphics editor compatible with Windows, Mac and Linux. Inkscape allows third-party plugins called extensions which offer custom functionality. In this video, we'll look at an Inkscape extension called JTEC Photonic Laser Tool. We'll use that to cut and engrave. The JTEC Photonic Laser Tool extension for Inkscape converts vector images and text to G-code. It allows us to control the laser speed, laser power, specify the number of passes, and adjust the height of each pass. The website has an easy to read step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install and use this extension. We'll start by downloading the free Inkscape application for your operating system. I'm using Windows 10, so I'll choose one of the Windows installers. I recommend installing the 32-bit Windows version instead of the 64-bit, as it seemed to work better on my PC. After installing Inkscape, download the JTEC extension from their website and copy the contents of the zip file into your Inkscape Share Extensions folder. When using a laser, it's best to understand how fast you need to move the laser and how many passes you need to repeat over the previous cuts to get the desired result. Here, I have some cardboard with a 20 mm square cut out from it. So in this test, we'll cut a square out of cardboard and we'll see what speeds and how many passes we need to do this. Open Inkscape. The first thing we'll do is zoom in our document page to fit the entire screen. To do that, we'll click on View, Zoom, Page. Now we can draw our square. From the left hand toolbar, choose the square and drag a square anywhere inside the document. We want to set the dimensions of this square to be 20mm by 20mm. To do that, top left hand side, we'll change the width to 20 and the height to 20. Now we'll select the mouse pointer icon. We want to change the location of this square to be in the center of our build platform. This JTEC Photonics laser tool uh, assumes that 0, 00 is where the laser will always start and that is on the bottom left hand side of the document. So to be able to cut this square in the center of the build platform we need to set the location of this square and to do that up the top we'll choose the X location starting at say 90 millimeters and the Y location starting at 90 millimeters. Now the square will be cut in the center of our build platform. Last thing we need to do is go up to path, select object to path. Now we're ready to export our G-code. In extensions choose generate laser G-code, choose JTEC Photonics laser tool and we are greeted with this window. For the laser on command, we are using the fan on the ramps board to turn our laser on and off. To turn the laser on is M106. To turn the laser off is M107. For our travel speed and laser speed, this is how fast the laser is going to move when cutting and not cutting. I want to cut this square at five millimeters per second, but it's asking for millimeters per minute. So I've set my speed to 300 millimeters per minute, which is five millimeters per second. For the laser power, we have the options between zero all the way up to 255, 255 being fully on and zero being off. I'll be leaving the laser at full power, so at 255. Power on delay, we're assuming that there's no delay when power is applied to the laser. So I'm leaving the power on delay to zero. With the number of passes, I've set the number of passes to two because I think it'll take maybe one, but just to be sure, two passes to cut this square through. With the pass depth, so this is 
changing the z-axis after each pass is complete. I'm just leaving this at zero for this test. Lastly, select a directory and a file name to export your G-code and choose apply. You'll see these coordinates have been inserted at the bottom of the document and an overlay has occurred on top of the square. Even though the square is solid in this document, the extension will only trace the perimeter of this shape. I've copied the square G-code file to an SD card, or you could print from the PC. I've also set the height of the laser to 50 millimeters from the cardboard, as that is what I have my focal point set at. The last thing I need to do is home the uh, laser, so X and Y, and we're ready to hit print. Glasses on. I'll select the square from the SD card. I could potentially increase the travel moves. That is woefully slow. certainly cut through. You can see the square has dropped out of the cardboard. And the end of the G-code file has the laser going back to position 00, zero at 5 millimeters per second. Let's take a look. Move that out of the way. Lift the cardboard up. Fall straight out. So that was two passes at 5 millimeters per second maximum laser power. For our next test, we'll try engraving some text. To do that, we'll click File, New. This will open a new document in Inkscape. Same as before, we'll click View, Zoom and Page. From the left hand toolbar, we'll choose the A symbol, that's for text, and we'll draw a box right about here, and we'll type something, tech to see on YouTube. Now I want to center this text, so I'll highlight that by pressing Control A, choose a line center. I want to make this text bold and a little bit larger so on the top left hand side I'll choose bold and I'll choose a slightly larger font maybe 40. The next thing I want to do is actually change the font. Top left again I'll go something a bit a bit different I'll choose where is it it is called old English text there we go, text to see on YouTube in old English text font. Just like before, we want to position uh, this text in the center of the build platform. To do that, we'll click the mouse pointer icon. We'll click the text so it's highlighted. And we want this in approximately the center. So for me, I'll change the X axis to say 50 millimeters and the Y axis to 50 millimeters. Not exactly center, but at least we know where the laser is going to start relative to where the laser uh, is going to be homed. Just like before, we'll go up to Path, choose Object to Path. And finally, Extension, Laser G-Code, JTEC Photonics. Now, I want to engrave this. I don't want to uh, cut this out. So I'm actually going to speed up my print. So instead of five millimeters per minute, I'll increase the speed to something like uh, maybe 25 millimeters per minute. 
to do that we'll up the speed from 300 to 1500 I'll leave the laser power at the maximum power for this test we'll leave the power on delay at zero I only want one pass we're not cutting here so one pass should be enough and we'll give it a name text.gcode hit apply And there it is. You can see all the toolpaths that have been created over the top of the text. Before I begin engraving this text, rather than manually setting the height of the laser before hitting print, I'm going to open up the G-code and I'm going to insert in the very first toolpath move the Z-axis height that I want my laser to be. So the very first toolpath move here is this G1 command. It's sending the X and Y coordinate. So here I'll just add the Z. So I'll hit spacebar and add Z50. So in one move, the X, and the Y and the Z will move to those locations. Then the laser will turn on and start engraving the text. For this test of engraving text, I'll be engraving onto cardboard, but as I've included Z50 into the uh, G-code, I don't need to pre-height the laser. So I've just honed the laser to position zero, the same uh, height as the actual cardboard. Glasses on, and hit print. That was very fast. Let's have a look at the results. For our last test, we'll try engraving a picture. To do that, we'll go up to File and select New Document. Just like before, we'll choose View, Zoom and Page. Now we'll go up to File, Import and we'll choose uh, some clip art. Here I'm choosing an SVG file of an aeroplane. As you can see, this plane is much larger than the document or the print space that we have. So what we'll do is we'll scale this plane without affecting the X and Y ratio. To do that, up the top, before we modify the width or height, there's this little lock symbol. Click that. So now when we adjust the width or adjust the height, the other will follow suit to maintain the aspect ratio. So for the width, at the moment it's quite large, 416 millimeters. I'll reduce the size down to say 120 millimeters. Now the width is 120 and the height is 69. I can click on this plane and now drag it around to where I wish it to be placed on the build platform. But here, rather than selecting the center, I want the plane to begin at position 00. zero. That way I can move the laser anywhere I want on the build surface, hit print and it'll start the laser engraving at the location where the laser is. So to do that, rather than manually move this down to position 0, 0, we'll go to the X coordinate, we'll choose 0, the Y coordinate, we'll choose 0, and now our plane will begin from the very bottom left of the build platform. Like before, we'll go up to Path, choose Object to Path, to Extensions, to Generate Laser G-Code, and I'll 
keep the same speed and laser power as the previous example as I only want to engrave I don't wish to cut this particular shape but I'll change the name to plane.gcode and click apply and we can see the toolpaths that are going to be used to engrave this plane on the 3D printer. And just like before, I'm going to introduce uh, the Z50 into the very first toolpath move, so I don't need to manually position my laser at 50 millimeters height from the etching surface. I'll be engraving the plane picture onto the top of this balsa wood surface and as we specified the plane to be at position 0, 0, it means we don't need the laser to start at position 0, 0. We can move the laser anywhere we like and it'll start engraving from wherever you place it. And as I've added Z50 to the G-code, I can also butt up the laser to the top of the surface. The build platform will drop by exactly 50 millimeters before engaging the laser, ensuring that we've got a nice sharp focal point to engrave the image. That's finished. Let's check out the result. And there it is, the plane etched onto the top of this balsa wood surface. So that's a look at the Inkscape extension from JTEC Photonics. It does what it says. It's a very easy to use uh, laser engraving and cutting tool for vector images. However, it only ever works for perimeters of uh, objects that we wish to engrave or cut. I'll be looking at another extension for, Inks for Inkscape. The next one will be called Raster to G-Code. And as the name suggests, we'll be able to convert raster files. They are picture files made of little dots or pixels, such as JPEGs, into our G-Code command to engrave onto surfaces.